So now we will resume session two, and the first presenter for session two is Representative Lee Gang Jae from Democratic Party of Korea. He's here with us, but just like the case of the Vice Minister Kim Gang Nip, he um, should be there if there is the emergency in the nation's battle against the COVID-19. So the video of the presentation is made already. So, but even though he's here with us, the presentation will be um, made via video and he will join us for the discussion. And his presentation will be on the post-COVID-19 era and the Korean New Deal to turn the crisis into an opportunity to make Korea a leader for the future. So please give him a big hand. Good afternoon. I am Lee Gwang Jae, member of Democratic Party of Korea. So today I will be presenting on the post-COVID-19 era and how we can overcome crisis to become a leader in history. In the past, one person, the father or mother, can be the breadwinner for entire family. But now couples are working together, but it's they are barely making a living. Why is that? We have digitalization ongoing, so if one person businesses will soon account for 50% of all the businesses, that will unstabilize employment and job opportunities. Secondly, life expectancy will soon become 120 years. In the past, when people start working at 25, they retire at 60 or 65, then die at 70 or 75 and the nation's pension system was made based on that expected life expectancy but now people living with until the 120 years they still have a 50 years to live after they retire at 60 or 65 so that will be difficult for us going forward and there's another challenge as well the mass production and mass consumption is very common in the big cities that we live in. So housing prices are really high and life in big cities is really difficult for young people. And two hours of your waking hours has to be spent on commuting. And if you choose to buy a car, that 20% of your money has to be spent on buying a car, paying for a car insurance and paying for parking or etc. So the expenditure is really high in the big city. First, digitalization will threaten job opportunities, employment, and the income will decrease as a result. And second, with people living until the 120 years old, that there are more people using the tax revenues than those contributing to them. And the high expenditure needed to live in big cities will make life really difficult for young people. Then we need the new breakthrough. And COVID-19 outbreak shows us that this can be both a crisis and an opportunity. The best way to predict the future and the best way to become a leader in the future is to create one. And COVID-19 has shown us that we can turn a crisis into an opportunity. Online class and online medical services are possible. And second, we should no longer turn a blind eye to climate change. And then there will be no future for humanity. Third, for human being, life is really important and life is a really significant. And in addition, what's G1 and G2 and what are the advanced nations? We have been seen, seeing, seeing many advanced nations and bench, we have been benchmarking these advanced nations. But now with the COVID-19 outbreak, we are thinking that we might become the model for such advanced nations. 
So how we can overcome such challenges? That COVID-19 outbreak is showing us how we can do that. We have to create a brighter future. And there have been cases that people turned the crisis into an opportunity. First, we have President Lincoln. Even during the Civil War, President Lincoln built a National Science Museum and built the Transcontinental Railroad. And President Roosevelt brought together 12,000 scientists to build Hoover Dam. And it is now a famous tourist destination visited by millions of people together with Las Vegas. And there is President Kennedy. During the Cuba Missile Crisis, he imagined that no one else could have imagined that he announced a plan to send a man to the moon, and he established NASA and mobilized 300,000 scientists. And in nine years, that he, the computers, the GPS, and mouse, and the internet were able to be developed thanks to the ambitious plan uh, developed by President Kennedy. So that's the ch challenge that it took. And the President Kim Dae-jung in Korea also established the e-government to make a digital archive of the annal of the Joseon dynasty and launched the COSTAC to overcome the Asian financial crisis. The best way to predict the future is to create one and to become a leader in the future. Then where should we head it? We should become a leader in digital transformation through the Digital New Deal. And second, Korea should no longer be remained as a villain in responding to climate change, and it should become a leader in responding to the climate change through the Green New Deal. And we should also lead, we can also lead the biotechnology then we can create a brighter future for the Republic of Korea. How can we do that? And I believe that's the future New Deal that we envisioned. In any society, the infrastructure is needed to develop. In agriculture society, we need rice, salt, and and iron, but in the industrial society, we need the railroad water supplies. But in the digitalized era, I, we, I think we need the knowledge as the infrastructure. Because in any civilization, those who have the knowledge became a leader. And we see the knowledge is shared through the internet. So we should go beyond 5G and 6G and should develop low Earth orbit satellites to become a leader in digital transformation. And think about neighbor and town. And that's used by all Koreans every day. But if you go there and find the information. Sometimes you're not sure what the source is, and the information is not really accurate. So that's why many people choose to use Google instead. I believe we should make neighbor and down just like a Google so that it can also provide such result as accurate as Google. And second, the National Assembly libraries, archives, and educational materials of KBS and EBS should be integrated and should be made open to the public at a low cost. Then we can provide knowledge for the future. And then students can create the contents and use the contents without having to worry about the license costs. Third, when we search the papers of Harvard University, it's inexpensive when we do it at universities, but it's expensive when we search it at home. So I believe that we should provide affordable access to such papers. And if you visit the Coursera in the US, there are over 60 million students taking courses there. If such trend continues, that we might be just translating and listening to these lectures available online. So I believe 
we should bring together esteemed scholars, and we should gather them together to make lectures for them. And let's say it costs 100 million won per year, and if we make lectures of 10,000 scholars, that 1 trillion won will be enough to create this lecture platform. Then students in Korea will have unlimited access to such knowledge. Then more international students will choose Korea. Also, the many students say that Korea is the country that spends most on English private tutoring, but still Koreans are not really fluent in English. Singapore was able to become home to many headquarters of international organization because they speak fluent English. I believe all the contents at the major ad networks in Korea should be made available in multiple languages. Then you see 80% of Koreans graduated from university, and these highly educated Koreans will be able to pick up foreign language easily just by watching the contents online. And then Korea can become a leader in the knowledge society, and that will lead us into a bright future. And secondly, The Korean government should establish the AI government and digital government. To do that, all the public institutions and the site's content should be integrated together through AI. And the UK integrated over 2,000 government websites, websites and make them available to the public. And all the public documents, the copies of registers should be added to the blockchain. And if we do that, I'm sure it will be even more successful than the e-government that we established before. And it will help us to create the new industry for blockchain as well. And digital revolution cannot be talked about without mentioning data. The fourth industrial revolution is all about intelligence and knowledge being created autonomously. AI is the key and data is basic source. 500 trillion won is spent in Korea and data governance administration should be established. And by using my medical data, I should be able to get online medical services. and without having to worry about my privacy infringed. Such medical data should be traded through the data exchange. Through FDA, Korea now has free trade with the 75 countries. And information and data free exchange agreement negotiations should be led by Korea. Then we can become a leader in digitalization. Recently, SK Telecom said that we should just go to the smart offices in your neighborhood and work from there without having to go to the office. There will be an increasing number of one-person businesses. And if you go to Gangnam neighborhood that you see at the cafe, many people are having the small meetings there for small businesses. And we have the elementary schools and middle school buildings that become empty from 3 p.m. Then we can build the smart offices there and we can build gym there. So the futuristic knowledge network center can be established at, the, at such buildings. Then it will be like a we work in my neighborhood. And we can also build a daycare center there to provide care for the kids while the parents are working there. And I would like to call this the Digital Analog Balance Center. At the elementary school buildings and at the new apartment complexes to be built, that we can build a center like this, then we can work more efficiently and productively. So we can have the global BDS conferences there and we can become a leader in digital transformation. But the problem lies with the National Assembly. Out of the 40 government agencies in Korea, the National Assembly is ranked 40s and the prosecutor's office is ranked 39th. The demo representative democratic system is no longer valid. Hospitals, schools in a few decades will become the relics from the 19th century. What the citizens want should be made into the law through direct democracy. So we need 
more one that is more elaborate than the online petition site of Blue House, so that what citizens want can be made into the law. And now let let me talk about Green New Deal. We should stop being one of the four climate villains. Jeremy Diamond said that climate change will cause food shortages, water shortages, and when small insects living in hot forests move to other areas, then we will have a new types of disease, and the sea levels will rise as well. And just like the COVID-19, we will have a new types of virus and disease. So to overcome such outbreaks that we need to have a more clear the energy strategy. First, we need to make sure that we keep our environment clean, just like the Yang Dechan stream, so that the major stream in city should be made clean so the kids can play there and have fun. And second, I believe that we should take bold steps to develop future vehicles. Mid-sized and compact-sized vehicles should be replaced with the electronic vehicles, and the tracks and large vehicles should be replaced with the hydrogen vehicles. And when taxi driver purchase vehicle, the special consumption taxes are exempt. So if we exempt consumption taxes for five years, then I'm sure we can make an easy transition to electric and hydrogen vehicle. That's the way forward. And also, the offshore, the large scale offshore and online wind farm should be established to use clean and sustainable energy. And there are so many buildings in major cities of Korea. And if you think about the roof and the surface of the roof of the plants, we have 495 square meters available. And the, we can install solar panels there to develop clean energy. And third, we it's a time for us to further develop bioscience. Top students with a high score have been choosing the medical school for the last 60 years. Petrochemical industry, nuclear power industry, and IT industry have been developed thanks to the top talent that have chosen such industry. And now is the time for top students at medical school join forces together with the IT industry to develop biotechnology. To do that, the National Health Insurance Service and HERA's data can be used as the basis. Second, in the virus industry, that we can become a focal point in the virus industry. And humans have cells, and uh, there are about 40 trillion microorganisms in our body, but less than 1% has been discovered yet. So if you think about the bifidobacteria, just by discovering the bifidobacteria, that one whole new industry was able to be developed. And if you think about it, the Korea has the longest history of fermentation. So we have the potential to develop this uh, microorganism, microbiome industry. We also need to overcome the high expenditure needed to live in big cities. Silicon Valley is home to many IT companies, and Napa Valley is well known for pine yards and wine. Wahaneyong, with a population of just about 35,000, became a city specialized in food worth 66 trillion. COVID-19 outbreak showed how dangerous big cities can be. By connecting railroads, small cities can be made stronger with their area of specialty, whether it is wine, red pepper paste, or microbiome. When we do that, we can have a brighter future. Then we can create more job opportunities, more housing, education, healthcare services, and cultures that are affordable to young people. Then young people today can take risks, get married, and choose to have a baby. Harvard University conducted a study for the last 70 years on happiness to see what makes people happy. And for people's happiness, 
The relationship was the most important. We live in the apartment complexes, and we stay anonymous in there, and we live lonely there. The biggest disorder that will threaten people's life will not be the cancer; it will be the depression. We should live together with the neighbors, so that the job opportunities, housing, education, and culture could flourish in the low-cost cities. Then we can have a brighter future, and that's the implication that we can drive from the COVID-19 outbreak. Let's put it this way: the Wahenyang. In the Netherlands, with a population of just about 35,000, build the food belly worth 66 trillion won. Napa Belly, out of 130,000 people living there, 15,000 people work together with the UBC to open wine courses. Even if the population is less than millions, tens of thousands of people can create a global business. That's the city that we envision for the future. Lastly. I would like to tell you that let's try together. In Asia, if you look at Asia, there are around seven thousand four hundred head offices. So instead of Hong Kong or Singapore, Korea can become home to such head offices. If we build and strengthen the global capacities, that we can do that. For the last 50 years, Koreans have been number one in the IQ test, and for the last 40 years, Koreans have been number two in math competition. And we're working longest hours, and we're playing hardest. We are very energetic, but what we lack is the global structure that will enable us to interact with the people from across the world. Once we build a such a structure that we can become number one at least in Asia, then I'm sure we will not be lagging behind other countries in terms of quality of life. And I'm sure that you, the young people, your bright eyes, hearts, and minds will determine such future. Let's build a brighter future for the Republic of Korea together. Thank you. Congressman Lee Kwang Jae, thank you very much for the presentation. That was a quite an ambitious message delivered.